Hello and welcome back to Righteous Talk here with Prophet Tahisha. I'm here um, today to speak, to teach on uh, prayer, how important it is to pray for yourselves. See, the importance of prayer is to pray for one another, to have that personal relationship with God, having that 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 line of communication that Jesus is on the main line. We can go to Him to all things. Uh, Prayer is very important in your life. Prayer uh, causes things to not be, to things to be that are not according to your faith. Prayer can cause things to be um, that you want, that you need to be according to God's riches and glory. Prayer is very powerful when you have the Holy Spirit. God hears the prayers of the righteous. Affection, fervent prayers of the righteous avail much, but God does not hear a sinner's prayer. God said he lent ear to the righteous. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So prayer is very, very important in your life. It is important that you have that line of communication with our Alpha and Omega, with our Lord Yahweh, Yeshua, Lord God. It is important that you acknowledge as Jesus uh in your prayer and pray in the name of Jesus. See, Jesus said in the Bible that no man can come to the Father except by me. No man can go to Alpha and Omega except by Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. No man can go to God Alpha, to, to God Almighty, but through Jesus Christ. So today I'm teaching on prayer. How is your prayer life? Are you praying on a daily basis? Are you praying enough? Or do you have your devotion? Do you have devotional time set aside for God? You know, sometimes we wonder why things uh, get kind of chaotic in a, in, in a day, you know, um, in your daily tasks. Why things may be a little chaotic. Why? Because maybe you forgot to pray. Or maybe you didn't pray for a specific thing that the Lord was leading you to pray. See, God's words are yea and amen. And we need to remember that. God said, do all things I desire that you prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Hallelujah. I'm going to say that again. God said, for all things he wishes that I prosper and, and be in good health, even as my soul prospers. So he wants me to maintain that prosperity that he has given me through prayer and supplications. And he wants me to stay in good health as I treat myself right, eat right. And, and and be upright with the Lord and, and do right for the Lord, for his glory, and also take good care of myself. Because, see, I am the temple. God said, take care of your temples. So he desires that we stay in good health. And God says as well as I desire that your soul prospers. See, he wants my soul to prosper. He wants me to know more and more about who he is. He wants me to be upright with him the more and more. He wants to take me to higher heights in life for me and his holy word. He wants me to know his Bible through and through. He wants my soul to prosper. And that is how your soul prospers, through the word of God. Because God speaks to you through the Bible. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can I get an amen? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So today I'm teaching on prayer and supplication. How is your prayer life? You need to make sure that you keep that line of communication with Jesus. We need to, You need to make sure that you keep that line of communication through Jesus with God. See, your way is a jealous God. Your way wants you to come to him. He don't want you seeking after someone else for some uh, advice. He doesn't want you seeking after some psychic to, to, to tell you, uh, something about your life. God is our everything. He is Alpha and Omega. He's Yahweh. He is the Lord. He wants you to come to him and he'll tell you about your life. So how is your prayer life? Are you upright with the Lord in your prayers? Are you taking everything to God in prayer? You say, well, you know, maybe I don't have time for prayer. Then if you don't have time for prayer, how would you feel if God said, I don't have time for you? So you need to make time for prayer. Prayer is important. Prayer starts off your day. When, you, when, when God opens your, your eyes in the morning, 
the first thing that should be on your mind is thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Before your feet even hit the floor, you need to be like, praise God. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. And when you get up and wash your face and put your clothes on, you don't want to go to the Lord in your, in your underclothes. That's totally scriptural. You cover up before you go to the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Then you need to go to your Lord after you have brushed your teeth and washed your face. Because, see, we're coming unto a high God. We're coming unto the only real God. We're coming unto the Almighty. We're coming unto Abba Father or Abba Daddy. We're coming unto the King of Peace. We're coming unto Jesus the Messiah. We're coming unto our Lord Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. The author and the finisher of our faith. So we need to have a certain appearance when we come unto him. You need to make sure that you are respectable and reverencing God when you come unto him and pray. So now that we got that out the way, the respect of the Lord coming into prayer and making sure that you have prayer in your life. Because if you don't have prayer in your life, you don't have a relationship with the Lord. I just want to elaborate on that. Without prayer in your life you don't have a relationship this is a sign of having a be a one being saved prayer this is a sign of one being saved the holy spirit acknowledging jesus acknowledging jesus went to the cross and died for your sins acknowledging that jesus is lord over your life acknowledging that he is the only begotten son acknowledging that god is on his throne acknowledging that he has his holy spirit with us you have to acknowledge that and knowing that one being saved speaking in tongues you have to acknowledge these things you have to acknowledge you cannot go through well you can go through life without prayer but you then you're going through life without god so the importance here is are you praying how is your prayer life you need to pray on a daily basis. The Bible tells us to pray without cease. To constantly pray without cease. And all that you get, you gain understanding. So the Lord is asking you and commanding you to put prayer in your life. To stay upright with him. And keep nothing from the Lord. Because God knows what is going on and what you do, what you think, how, how you feel before you even do it. Don't hold nothing back from the Lord because he doesn't like that. God likes a pure heart. So there are different types of prayer. There's adoration prayer. There's devotional prayer. There's prayer of communion. There's confessions of prayer. Confessing and repenting unto the Lord. Stand uh, cleansed like King David was. He fell to his face constantly. Uh, and if he thought that he'd done anything that wasn't pleasing to the Lord, he fell boldly onto the floor, face down. Lord, forgive me for all of my sins and iniquities and purge me with his hop. Make me whiter than snow. Toss all those things that wasn't pleasing to your sight into the sea of forgetfulness. Lord, forgive me as a blinking an eye lad. And toss those sins away and remember them no more. Which the Lord said, he will remember your sins no more. As long as you come unto him and you repent and you acknowledge the advocate with the Father. You got to have that blood covenant if you want to be saved. You got to have that baptism. Baptism, if you want to be saved, you have to believe on John the Baptist. If you want to be saved, you have to believe in Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If you have to be saved, you have to believe that he went on Calvary that, that bloody Friday. If you want to be saved, you have to have that prayer in your life. If you want to be saved, by one wants to be saved, you have to have prayer. You got to keep that prayer in your prayer, in your life. You got to pray. You got to acknowledge that there is a God. You have to acknowledge that he he is the only God. You have to acknowledge that God made the whole heaven and the earth and he established the word and the word is, is made flesh. You have to acknowledge these things coming into prayer. You have to have a prayer life with the Lord and you can't be lazy and slothful. The Bible speaks on slothfulness. Be not slothful unto the Lord. 
Because God is not concerned with his promise. He is not slack concerned his promise at all. He will keep his promise with you, but you have to come forth to him as well. As you draw near to God, he will draw nigh to you. There is also intercessory prayer. Where we get the elders, where the elders pray, then there's intercessory prayers in four corners of the earth. God has them planted there, his prophets, his intercessory prayers, his evangelists, his missionaries, his ministers and prophets. He has them in four, all four corners of the earth. So there's intercessory prayer that can go forth towards other people. They all come together in unity as, as, as if they were in the upper room praying for someone, for something, for, for a multitude of people. For salvation or whatever it may be but the intercessors pray for us there's conditions of prayer you know certain conditions of prayer that you pray for you pray in a certain way there is a certain way to pray for certain things you need healing you pray that Pacific healing prayer you need deliverance you pray for that redemption to fall upon you, for God to deliver you. You pray a prayer for deliverance. You need a touch from the Holy Spirit. You just need God to touch you sometimes. Hallelujah. I say, Lord, sometimes I just want to be reminded that you're near me. Touch me, Lord. I need that Holy Spirit touch. Ah, thank you, Lord. I just say, Lord, I pray. I say, Holy Spirit, just touch me. Just touch me. Let me know, Lord. Let me know you're still here. Because God promised, Lord, and I remind the Lord of what he said. The Lord said he will never leave you nor forsake you. So sometimes I ask the Holy Spirit, just touch me. Just touch me. Glory. Hallelujah. And he touches me. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Yes, he does. Hallelujah. So we got to remember there are certain conditions of prayer. But prayer is the number one key in the start to your salvation. You start out with repentance, acknowledging that you have done wrong and that you have that you have done wrong in the sight of God. And you have done wrong to people and you have done wrong to yourself. So you repent of whatever it is that you have done wrong. You repent with pure heart, pure heartedly repentance. Don't hold nothing back from the Lord. I'm warning you because God doesn't like it. God knows when you're telling the truth. He knows the heart. So you can put on a fashionable, a, a fashionable uh, fake in the front to yourself or to others, but God knows the heart. And that's why it's important that you be real with yourself, because there ain't no future in front, as they used to say back in my time. Ain't no future in front. So let's be real with ourselves and keep ourselves in constant prayer. The Bible speaks on prayer without cease. And pray as well as watch. So we're speaking on the conditions of prayer. There are certain conditions on how to pray. Whatever it is that the need is, God knows it before you even ask for it. But God also says, hallelujah, and this is the part that I love. God says, knock and the door shall be open. He said, ask and you shall receive. He says, seek and you shall find. That's God, yay, and amen. Oh, he's a marvelous Lord. I'm so thankful for my Lord, Alpha and Omega. Glory, hallelujah. I'm so thankful for my Lord, Yeshua. I'm thankful for Yahweh. I'm thankful for the Messiah. I'm thankful for God because he gave his only begotten son to come on down from his throne and to save me so that I can have the advocate with the Father so that I can go to God boldly. God said, come boldly unto my throne. But you have to be saved. If you ain't saved, you can't come like that. You can't come to the king. You can't come to the God like that. You can't come any old kind of way if you ain't like that. And even if you ain't righteousness, you still got to have that reverence for the Lord. Like I said, make sure you are clothed before you are praying to the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise to God. And all things that we do, let God be the glory. 
Let God be glorified. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So there are certain conditions on prayer. There's intercessory prayer where we pray for multitude. Uh, there's intercessory prayer that uh, in all four corners of the earth. There's confession and prayer, meaning repentance and prayer. Confession, confessing your sins. You don't need to go to no place that has a little box and the guy pull the window open and, and confess, Father, for I have sinned. Oh, no. No, honey, we got the advocate with the Father. See, we got the blood covenant with, with, with the Father. We got that blood covenant, that holy blood covenant. We got that holy advocate with the Father. We don't have to go to no confession stands. We don't have to go confess to something else or someone else. We go straight to the Father. We go straight to our, our, our God Almighty. We go straight to Yahweh. And we cry out, Abba Daddy. Abba Father. And he said when you cry out, Abba Father, he will come and he will save you from your sins. He will say he will deliver you from your sins. He will save you from your enemies. That's what the word says. The word is true. And Jesus said, you cannot come to the Father except by me. You have to have Jesus first. You have to believe that he is the Savior of the world. You have to believe that he is the advocate with the Father. You have to believe that Jesus is the Messiah. You have to believe that Jesus is Lord. You have to believe that Jesus is the Holy Spirit. He said, I go into a place and prepare a place for you. If this, was, if this was not so, I would not have told you it was so. But I go and I prepare a place for you. But when I leave, I will, I will not leave you comfortless. I will leave you with the comforter. I will send my spirit back unto you. And you will receive me. And you will receive power over all the enemy. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Are you praying right? Are you praying today? Are you praying in prayer and supplication? Are you praying with, con with, with confession? Are you praying with repentance? Are you praying for others' salvation? Are you an intercessor of prayer? Are you an evangelist? Are you a prophet? Are you preaching and teaching? Are you you're helping? Are you loving? Are you walking in loving kindness? Are you praying to the Lord? Because if you are not, if you don't have that relationship with the Lord, you don't have a prayer life with the Lord. If you don't have a prayer life with the Lord, you don't have a relationship with the Lord. So James 5, 16 teaches us righteousness prayer. Righteous prayer. Teach you how to uh, 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 pray in righteousness. The effect and the great power of the righteous prayer. Affection, fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And those who fear the Lord, uh, God will deliver them out of all their uh, afflictions and, and will, will deliver them out of all of their afflictions. God says many afflictions of the righteous, but he shall deliver them out of all. Deliver them out of them all. God will deliver us as long as we take it unto him with prayer and supplication, withholding nothing back. So James 5, 16 uh, show, tells you about the effect and the great power in prayer. Make sure you got your prayer life today. Hallelujah. Because you can't do nothing. There ain't nothing that you can do without prayer. But you can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens you. And we are strengthened through the word of God. We are strengthened through our prayer life. We are strengthened. Oh, honey, we can have mountains moved through prayer and all supplications. We can have things that are not to be so through prayer. You know, certain things that I have so desired in the past, and I still desire for today an upgrade on it. But you know what? I believe it's going to come to pass because I step fast in prayer about it. But God said, have, have, have faith as a little as a mustard seed. And I always, I'm the one that remind the Lord, Lord, I've got faith bigger than a mustard seed. You know, God said, try them. 
and see if he won't pour you out a blessing. Try him and see if he won't pour you out a blessing. No, oh, I do try. Yes, I do. I tell him, I say, Lord God, Alpha and Omega, this is what you said in your holy word. And you told me that you ain't slack concerned your holy promises. You promised me that you'll never leave me or forsaken me. You promised me, Heavenly Father, that if I fall short to give you the glory, that you will say, over there is that blood covenant for that child of mine. Look at that child down there blessing my my name. Oh, look at how she is raising my name up on high. She got that blood covenant, so she all right with me. She is all right. The child is all right. Yes, she is. She got that blood covenant over there, because she pray unto me every day. She seek me diligently, so I'm going to come on down and see about her, because she reminded me of, her, of my word that I said that I would keep. And God ain't slack concerned his promises. Glory, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. So you go into, um, I want to read out of Psalms 18. Hallelujah. Glory, thank you, Jesus. I feel your spirit. I want to read out of Psalms 18, 1 through 3. It also uh, helps you to know how to pray and, and gives you encouragement Psalms, I always take the books of the book of Psalms as an encouragement and as praise to the Lord. So let's read out of Psalms 18, 1. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. Hallelujah. My God, my strength. See there he's speaking on, I'm, I, I, the Lord give it to us so we can indulge it in us so therefore it's for us so i like how it's written i will love thee oh lord my strength the lord is my rock and and my fortress so i will trust in him he is my fortress he has everything that i need and everything that i desire and he is my deliverer he will deliver me. He is my God and he is my strength. He will strengthen me in the time of trouble. He will hide me in the time of trouble. He will strengthen me in the time of weakness. All I got to do is call on him. Just call his name Jesus. Just call him Jesus and he'll be right there. Jesus. He will sustain you from the very appearance for evil. Jesus. You said that you were... Order my footsteps. Jesus is my strength. Hallelujah. Glory. He is my deliverer. He will take the taste of cigarette smoke right on out your mouth. Just ask him. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. He will deliver you out of all your sins and iniquities. He will deliver you from your sins. He is the holy deliverer. He is the holy strength of my life. God is the holy love of my life. I love the Lord. He is that solid rock. He is that loving rock. He is that delivering rock. He will save us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The righteousness of prayer and effects in the great power of prayer. We can find it. And uh, James 5, 16. And right now we're in, uh, we're in uh, Psalms 18, 3. That was one. The Lord, I will, uh, I will love the Lord, oh my Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer, and my God, and my strength. And I want to go over here to Psalms 18, 3. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy. You see that there? God is worthy. We will call upon the Lord. God is worthy to be praised. He is high and mighty, but he looks low. He is worthy to be praised. So Psalms 18, 3. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Just like I told you earlier, we call him Alpha. I'm sorry, we call him Abba. Abba Father. And he will save us from our enemies. God promises to heal our land, save us from our enemies, deliver us out of trouble. He promised that he would hide us 
in the time of trouble and that he will honor us. He said it in Psalms 91, he that abideth under the shadow of the Almighty, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, he is my shield, my buckler, my fortress, and God I will trust. He sends his archangels to keep camp around those who fear the Lord. So if you are praying, if you have a prayer life with the Lord, you must fear the Lord. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, glory. He said it in Psalms 91, lest I dash thy foot a bit of stone. He will keep his angels charge around us, and if you dash your foot against that stone, you're Got that advocate with the Father. Now, I'm not telling you to go out and dash your foot against a stone. I'm telling you to stay upright with, with the Lord and stay in prayer with the Lord. But God has that advocate with you, that communication line with you, that he will lend ear to your prayer when you fall short to his glory. He said that when we call, he will answer and he will honor us. He said that he will be there for us and he will hide us in the time of trouble. He said that he will show us our salvation. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm just thankful for the Lord. I'm thankful that he saved me. I'm thankful for Jesus coming into my life. He chose me and I responded. Thank you, Lord. I responded to the Holy Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth of Galilee that saved my soul, that saved me from a righteous lifestyle, that saved me from from clubbing, that saved me from foul language, that saved me from having a, a hearted heart, a hardened heart. The God Alpha and Omega that brought me through some hard times and I got up and praised him. He raised me up when I was sick with, with bronchitis and I got up and I praised him and now I have a testimony. He brought me out of the world of sin and into his marvelous light. He brought me hallelujah through some storms and I got out of them storms and never looked back but I gave the praises unto the Lord hallelujah God will do it for you won't he do it for you minister Amen. the Lord will do it for you he will bring you through but sometimes you gotta go through just to get to where God wants you to be because sometimes your prayer life ain't always effective sometimes you half stepping in your prayer but God wants you to be full stepping in your prayer life so God wants you to be on top of things. He wants you to acknowledge him first. And God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Then all these things shall be added unto you. You ought to have the Lord's prayer inside of your mouth daily. You ought to have praises in your mouth from the Lord daily. You ought to pray without cease. God said pray without cease. Jesus prayed on the mount. He fasted on the mount for 40 days and for 40 nights. Can you give God each day of your life prayer, even if it's once a day? Jesus prayed without cease for 40 days and 40 nights. John the Baptist prayed without cease. Moses prayed without cease. King David prayed without cease, fell on his face, flat on his face when he filled himself, if he even thought anything, unrighteous. Let us be as the Bible says to be. Let us pray in all prayer and supplication unto the Lord. Let's experience the effect and great power that it speaks of in James 5, 16. The power and the effect of prayer. Pray daily unto the Lord. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. That is very, very important. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And I want to close in prayer with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into no temptation, but deliver us from all sin and evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. God bless you. Keep your prayer life up. Upgrade on your prayer life and watch God do some marvelous things in your life. Until then, thank you for joining in with Righteous Talk and Shalom unto you.